Welcome to another video from Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. Today we're going to cover the join command. Okay, I lied. We're going to cover all the reasons you should never use the join command. And when I say never, there's always cases, but as a general rule, the minute you say I'm going to use join, don't. Uh, join is massively taxing on your system. It also has a limitation that it can only join on 100,000 fields. It won't tell you that. Uh, you'll just think you're joining and not get all the data. So I'm just going to tell you right off, do not use the join as a general rule. And the beauty is there's actually a built-in command for Splunk that does join and it's faster, quicker, and it doesn't have the limitations. And what is it? It's stats. You're going to say, really? Stats? How does stats do? I'm not looking for statistics. I'm looking to join the data together. This isn't a database. This is Splunk. And Splunk uses stats. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna show you the example. I'm gonna define what the stats command really is, and hopefully it starts to make more sense. Why the stats command is actually a joining command, and it's very very efficient. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna come over here. We're gonna look at some data. I'm not actually making a good use case. I'm just gonna join data together. That's all I really want to do. So what we're gonna do is I want to grab the PowerShell logs here, and I want to grab the sure we'll do the security logs and we want to we want to join them together on on the computer name all right cool so what we're going to do i'm going to come in here and i'm going to write index equals bots v3 and then i'm just going to do source type equals and i'm not i'm not going to write all these out because i'm going to fat finger them so i'm just going to paste it what i want is in parentheses I'm going to go grab the source type for this machine and its computer name then I'm going to do or this type and its computer name so I'm basically saying hey I want this source type and I want this source type and I'm going to run that I need to run it all time and we can see that we have two source types but that's not joined that's just two sets of data combined all right cool well what if we do something like this stats count by let's do this um, by computer name and then we're going to come over here and we're going to do values source type as source type. If I do that, look what I end up getting. I get a computer name with two fields joined together. That's what stats does. It grabs something that it's got in common and it throws the other fields together. If you think about, hey, give me a statistics. Sum up the amount of bytes in, bytes out. Buy an IP address. Here's your IP address. It grabs all of the bytes in or the bytes out that are related to this computer name and combines them together. So it'll do that across source types. It'll do it across anything. The stats command, this buy field, says, hey, group these things together by this. What is that? That's join. That's a join command. It doesn't say join, but it's fast. And so you can do that. All right, well, there's a problem here. What, uh, one of the things is I don't want to buy, what if I want to do, open up this a little bit more. Instead, I want to grab not just source type. I want to go grab all the fields. Well, that that's not really a problem. We can use values star as star. Now my recommendation when doing that is recognize this is not highly efficient. I'm only getting 2,500 values, so it's not a big deal. I don't really actually want all those values, but we're, we're just playing around, giving you an idea how it works. So I'm going to go grab some fields that I think are useful. I'm going to say I want, and if I find that scrolling left to right is just way, way too difficult, and it is, I'm going to go do head one, transpose. I'm going to grab the first value and transpose it. What is it going to do? It's now going to flip them all this direction. 
Oh, okay, so I now know which fields I want to work with. Hopefully, when you're planning on joining, you already knew the fields you wanted to join on, the fields you wanted to look at between the two different source types. But if you don't, I actually have no idea what I'm putting together here. So we're just going to go, I want a computer name. I want, you know, it's going to be easier. Let's go grab, do an example here. We'll reduplicate this twice. And I'm actually going to switch it. Instead, I'm going to go grab this without the or. Head 100. Let's see some fills that I think are useful from the PowerShell. Let's go with message name. Message, cool. Um, I bet I have a message in the other one too, so that might be a little, it'll work, but I didn't, it's not going to be quite what I meant to do, so let's try it though. Oh, that's fine, I'll use it this way. I want, I want the useful fields on the side. Message is good, but I bet there's a message over here, so let's go with, Instead of grabbing the, I want, even though message is the one I really want, let's go with log name. Or maybe source name. We'll do Sid. Oh, I bet there's a Sid over here too. No, no Sid. Cool. So then we'll grab mandatory label over here. Two fields that exist in the different data sources. So Sid, make sure I spelled that right, Sid. Nope, it's lowercase and mandatory level label. Switch that. Oops. There we go. Now I got my SID and my mandatory label. And notice they're coming back. Let's throw a source type in here as well. happens to be that they joined so let's just do what if I take the computer names out so uh, first before I do that so you can see I'm now joining on these fields I can call out what I want and I can do stuff with it what if I want to uh, I'm not going to pay I don't care about the computer name this would be bad but let's say we're joining them and I don't want all of them just to absolutely match maybe some of them don't so I'm just gonna go like here now what we find is for example BGS BGIST okay yeah this B stole machine here had security logs but it did not have PowerShell logs so how do I only get back the ones that joined together? I don't want to do the ones that don't join together. These are by themselves. I want to get rid of these security logs. I only want them when they, they exist in both. Well, that's easy. This is a multi-value field. So we can go something really simple. Eval MV count field equals MV equals MV count. And then we put that name in source type. Since we're joining, I, I love to do it on source type because that's typically what I do. I put multiple source types in, join by source type, and then I'm going to do where MV count filled is greater than one, meaning it's this has a count of two, this is a count of one. I only want the ones that are greater than one, meaning they joined. They have the two together. So you can do this. And now I'll only get the ones that effectively join together, that there were logs in both of them. The other one I could do, if I take this out, I don't have to do it that route. There's other ways. We can, remember, we grab fields from both sides. So if I got a security log, notice what I don't have. I don't have a SID. So I could do something like where not is null. I really don't like it this way, but not is null mandatory label. 
something like that. That should work. And basically, it's going to say both of these fields can't be null. Really bad idea because we're using not statements, um, null. But oh, I didn't quite get it right. But the point is, I guess I could do this. Not go this way. I think is null. Anyway, I'm not going to go down. Have to, again, I like the MV count. It's just so much easier. Search MV count filled greater than two. That's not going to work. Greater than one. And then I get it back. Now I'm not using nots. I'm not doing nulls. It's just, it's always better to use values instead of trying to use null values. So anyway, there's my combine. Well, you're going to say, well, okay, you joined them. In some cases, this is pretty nebulous. I grabbed all time. Well, you know what I could do? I can go like this. I can go bin time span equals five minutes. Now, when I go by computer name, we're also going to throw in time. What have I done here? I've said not only that, I want the logs to be to have occurred within five minutes of each other. There is a little bit of problem with this because what if one occurred, let's say, at 540, uh, 4.49 and one occurred at 5.01? I, I recognize there's some issues going on there, but you're going to have that problem with the join statement too. So it's not like I just gave you a simple uh, a problem. You're, gonna, you're just going to have to look at them and how they break. So anyway, if I go like this, I can go, we probably should have put time in there. Now I've got them broken up into buckets. And so at four o'clock, these two occurred together, these occurred, these occurred, these occurred. Boom, I've got myself joined data with, out using the join command. I don't wanna write the join command here, but if I went a time, if I ran these against, if you ran the exact same thing with the join command, you'd find it was slower. You also don't have the uh, advantage that you're going to, you. this stats command doesn't have the limitations that it only return 100,000 values. So I'm, in my opinion, this is a much superior way. This is the Splunk way. Splunk will tell you stats is the key. You're gonna see a lot more videos coming out. Stats is amazing. Stats does things you'd never even think it does, but it's all because it's doing this by it's what it's not just a statistical means what it's doing is it's combining them off of fields which is the exact thing you mean by saying join so just get in your head that stats and join are synonymous stats is a joining command even though splunk build a join in there don't use it i only use joins when i'm working with like uh lookup files and things that i've done uh, that are really really Womp, wonky. I can do a video on join, but again, it's not something I'd recommend. You'll almost always find that stats works better. Anyway, hope this helps uh, and that it helps move you from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to this channel. Additionally, we offer the opportunity to become a member of this channel and that membership has the perks of being able to see videos as soon as they're created, which could be up to a month before they're released publicly. Additionally, if you want to supercharge your lame training, we offer training that it will never be open to the public and that covers administration training. It covers how to hunt and do analytic work. We have apps and other things that we've done that really streamline the process. And we offer those to our membership. Your membership helps this channel grow and allows us to get the technology and the abilities to be able to give better demonstrations and make this technology more available to everyone. So please like, subscribe, and if you're interested, I would appreciate if you joined and became a member of this uh, channel.